I trust God that we are going to ascend in the realm of the Spirit this very service. Without further ado, quickly take your seats because of time. As I told you, I'll be very quick in what I need to do and very intentional. But my only desire this service is that you shift your focus from what has taken place in your life to what is taking place and what is being said in this service. There are some of you that may have come with a sickness to this service. One lady, I remember she came to the church. And when this was in the midst of the pandemic, how many of you remember? Ah, you don't remember the pandemic? <laughs> hello. Those watching me all around the world, hello. You have to comment hi, 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 hi. <laughs> how many of you remember? So now churches had just opened. And I tell you, coronavirus had become more feared than demons. <laughs> so one lady, she came to me, and I remember I'm ministering, we've just opened churches back up, and in the service, she now, i now moving around, I'm prophesying, I'm prophesying, or maybe this testimony, I should save it for another time. Those online, shall I save it for another time, or I should do it now, let me know. So, I'm moving around, and I'm in the spirit of the prophetic, I said, Meleka pra adesko veyaneate. And you see, let me tell you something. When you are handsome, it assists the prophetic. <laughs> I'm just joking. God can use you anyhow. <laughs> but how can you be handsome, ugly with the prophetic? You become handsome. <laughs> so that service, I was even looking good. Hey. So the way I was prophesying, I wasn't just saying... The Spirit of God is telling me. No, I say you. God is telling me. So as I'm moving around, I'm moving around. The Lord told me to speak to one lady. I spoke to one lady. And remember, I told you, even the fashion that I had that Sunday, it was assisting the prophetic. I can tell those online are not with me. Those watching all around the world, they're not with me. Even the outfit I was wearing, it was assisting the prophetic. The confidence I had, you couldn't tell me anything. Even if you tell me someone has taken my vehicle, I said, let them take it. I can even have the spare keys, they forgot it. That was the level of confidence I had. And I'm moving around. And I begin to speak to one lady. I said, come here. I said, do you want prophecy? I said, if you keep on doing this level of joy, I'll pass it on to someone else. I told you, this is the level of confidence. Ah, wow. And I spoke to her. I said, come here quickly. And I said, what is it you want God to do for you? She said, uh, see, I want God to do this. I want God to do this. But I came here because I've, I actually have COVID. I said, God bless you. <laughs> ah, I know some people here. Some people here are too holy for my liking. I said, COVID, and you are here. I said, no, leave me alone, please. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you from home. <laughs> I pray for the lady. COVID left the next week. It was done. Somebody here. The problem you came in here with, the moment you came in here, it dropped at the door. Ah! Hey! Hey! Sit down, sit down. Imagine the moment I prayed for her. It was done. But then I opposed the question. I said, where else is she supposed to go? Because this place that we are in, it is more effective than clinics. More effective than accountants. We are more effective than the home office. So if she has this disease, where else will she go? There are some of you here. You came with your problem. I am here to tell you, as a seer of God and the seer of London, that problem, it shall not live on in the name of Jesus. I speak now in the name of Jesus. It is over with and it is consumed by fire. Somebody shout fire.
Hey. Now, quickly because of time, there is fire on the altar. Uh, sit, sit, sit down. There is fire on the altar. The Bible speaks of the Lord, and we're about to fly in the next few seconds. I said we're about to fly, my people here, we're about to fly. The Bible spoke of Lucifer. And the Lord said, the same fire I placed on the inside of you is the same fire I will cause to consume you. So even the fire of the enemy is nothing compared to the fire that God has placed upon us. So when she came with a sickness, it was simply consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. The moment she came, she entered the location. Sickness exited the location. The moment you came here, your problem exited the location. The moment you tuned in, your sickness, it exited the location. I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. There is a shift in your life. Sit down, sit down. What is it that she could go to the hospital, she could go to the clinics, and yet they could not cure the disease that was upon her life. But the moment she entered this location, the sickness had no choice but to leave. The reason is simple. It is fire. What the enemy did not bank on was her entering a location where fire burns on the altar. Ah. You see, the enemy did not bank on you coming here tonight. The enemy did not bank on you tuning in tonight. The moment you came here, that problem was consumed by fire. Sit down, sit down. So what was it? The biggest mistake that anyone can ever make and the biggest mistake that she made was to think when she came into the location, she was speaking to a person that was clothed in cloth. Rather, I came clothed in fire. Why? Because in these last days, this is where we go. This is where we're starting somebody. Listen, wherever you are, even if you don't know the neighbor, shake your neighbor. Tell them, wake up, wake up, wake up. Yes. In fact, turn, do to the other neighbor. Tell them, wake up, wake up. You have just shaken the right neighbor. I've seen it. Because that neighbor, I just saw one person, they were already dozing. Maybe it's the shift from last night. Makaki. You've shaken the right neighbor. And notice, ah, what I'm about to minister, I want your spirit to be sensitive to what I'm saying. When we begin to say jokes like this, it's so that you can remember the revelation connected. But I want your spirit to be sensitive because what I'm about to minister carries so much depth attached to it. You see, the biggest mistake you can make is to think on Sunday service, I came clothed in a suit. Or to think you are seeing prophet angel and he is clothed in a suit. Rather, he came clothed as fire. Because in these last days that we are in, it is not men of giftings that God is looking for. He is looking for men of altars that are fire burning. It is in the, 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 the strength of Abraham was hidden and revealed through altars. Because it is in the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 4. The Bible says, unto this altar Abraham built. In the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 18. It says, and Abraham built this altar. Continuously throughout the book of Genesis. The strength to Abraham's power was hidden in altars. I know some of you here. I wish some people here. My desire for you tonight is that you catch a revelation that can make you journey beyond the ages in the name of Jesus. Sit down, sit down. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, 
verse 4, Abraham built an altar. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, verse 18, he built an altar. In the book of Genesis chapter 29, verse 9, Abraham built an altar. Every single location Abraham entered, they were littered with altars. The secret to his strength was not his gift, but the fire on his altar. So in these last days, it is not your gift God is looking at when he is choosing and deciding the person to use. On the canvas board, when God is deciding and depicting the individual to use, he is not looking at the gift. He is not looking at your, your sharpness in the prophetic. He is not looking at your ability in the unction of healing. Because even the Bible says in the last days, I will pour my spirit amongst all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall have dreams. Your old men shall prophesy. Meaning the, the gift of prophecy is available to every Christian. So God is not looking at your ability in the prophetic. He is not looking at your ability in healing the sick. He is looking, is there fire on your altar or not? He is not looking for giftings. He is looking for fire. Ah. It is men of fire that journey beyond the canon of time. This is why. It is a man of fire that journey beyond the canon of time. It is a man of fire that don't die. They move from life to eternity. The Bible spoke of the brother of Cain, Abel. And he said, he spoke of Cain killing his brother Abel. And the Bible says, the Lord has the audacity to say to Cain, the blood of your brother crieth unto me from the ground. Even in death, Abel's voice was being heard. And yet he was a dead man. His altar was speaking for him even in death. There are people here that are surviving of the prayers of their mother. Surviving of the prayers of their father. Because even in their death, their altar is still burning for them. Fire on the altar. Sit down, sit down. There was fire on the altar of Abel. That even in death, his voice was still being heard. You are here, walking, talking, alive. Your voice is not being heard. Why? It is not because of a lack of gift. It is lack of fire. It is a man of fire that journey beyond the curtain of time. It is Bishop Idahosa, as prophet always speaks about, the great Bishop Idahosa. <laughs> it was the day before he died, he canceled all of his meetings, canceled all of his events. And that day he sat and said, I am missing home. And then he died. Mm. that's the moment he left that is not a man that died that is a man that left there are men of fire that don't die they live they can journey beyond the curtain of time it is something that Moses managed to articulate this is why he had caught fire so potent that even God had to create a system that could force him to die because with the fire that he caught, Ale Kabayas. Ah. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I know some of you are not getting me. All around the world, I can see you are not getting me. You are not getting me. It is men of fire. There had to be a system that was created specifically for Moses to die. The man had caught fire so potent that he could refuse to die, that God had to create a system, some type of frequency that could force him to die, that go upon the mountain and die. What did he catch? Fire. There was fire burning on his altar, so potent that even if you grabbed a knife and put it through his body, the man would still be breathing, even better than what he was. Fire. He refused to die. That God had to force him to die. Now you, if you catch flu. <laughs> I know some people are here. They, some people here, they don't want to testify. <clears throat> you, 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 you catch flu. Even a headache. Am I here, somebody? 
Am I here, somebody? Yeah. All around the world. Are you there? Yeah. Even if you catch flu, one person I know that is close to me. <laughs> one person that I know that is close to me. Just one headache, even small headache. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Ah, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> the man, it's as if he's died. It's as if he's died. You will not see him for three weeks. <laughs> you with flu, and yet they were men that even if you stab them, they would refuse to die. Wow. Men of fire. Uh-huh. One person called me one other day. They said, see, I've been failing to reach you the whole day. The whole day I couldn't reach you. Why couldn't I reach you? Are, are you okay? They could only reach me the next day. Ah, I wish people were here. Because there is a place I want to ascend to. And if you are watching me online, share the fire. Share the fire. Share the fire. Share this with someone. Share the fire. Hey! Hey! I feel it, I feel it. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Sit down, sit down. They called me. The whole day I failed to reach you. I said, listen. I said, my brother, you have to forgive me. I said it's because the devil tried to deceive my body that, was, that it was sick. So the whole day I was in the place of prayer. They called me and they said, we couldn't reach you. We thought something was wrong. I said I was in the place of prayer because the enemy tried to deceive my body that it was sick. My first resort was not medication. My first resort was fire. That was my first resort. That sickness you have no hold in my location. How have you even entered this location? Do you not know fire is burning here? Yeah. Sit down. I was in the place of prayer. I was not on, in the hospital. I was not drinking lamb sip. <laughs> Some of you know it. Some of you know it. I can tell. I was not seeking for medication. I was in the place of prayer because I know that this prayer, it speaks better things than the medication can. There is a fire on my altar that no matter the plans of witchcraft, when they arrive here, they burn here also. I see that sickness burning in the name of Jesus. Sit down, sit down, sit down. This is the reason why it's easy for many of you to sin. Because there is no fire in your house, household. Wow. The moment you begin to paint and stain the walls of your, lo- your house in prayer, it is difficult for you to sin in that location. The sins, the, 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 the walls of, of, of my father's house are stained in prayer. That you can enter the location and begin to smell. We, we, we used to be in the garden when my father was still located in the United Kingdom. And he would go into the garden and we'll pray, 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 pray. One day we did seven days prayer. At the end of the seven days, I now wanted to go rest. As I'm walking, he said, where are you going? I said, Kai. (laughs) (laughs) We have agreed it's seven days. Now you are asking me, where am I going? I'm going to my bed, man of God. (laughs) Seven days. After the seven days. I'm now going. He says, where are you going? I said, Father. I said, I'm just going to turn around. (laughs) Who am I to tell him? I'm going to sleep. My heart, though, was saying this man, he's too spiritual. (laughs) It's too hard. Seven days, we did. At the end of the seven days, he said, we are continuing to another seven days. At the end of that seven days, it was now 14 days. I said, thank you, man of God. I'm now going to sleep. He said, now, we are going doing another seven days. 21 days in the place of prayer. Fire. 
Sit down. 21 days in the place of prayer, we infected that whole, whole location with, with fire. This is why it seems as if these men of God, they don't wait for the presence of God to shift. They carry the presence with them. This is why you can be in a location. The presence of God will not move until the man of God walks in. He is carrying the presence with him. At the end of those 21 days, there was a location where we would break a bottle of oil. And when you go to that location, it smelled of smoke. There were literal smoke. Smoke was coming from the ground. And we could smell it as pure smoke coming from the ground. Smoke. Where there was no fire there to your optical eyes. But in the realm of the spirit, fire. Fire. There was fire on the altar. What? We have journeyed beyond the curtain of time. There was fire burning on the altar. 21 days. Do you think you can bring down a man that has prayed for 21 days? That was just the, the 21 days we were doing. Even after the 21 days, the prayer has become an economy of life. It is no longer a ritual. It is a way of life. Those 21 days, it was just a different level that we were doing. That was contrary to our way of life. 21 days in the place of prayer. Men like Moses. This is why it was Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. That when he was praying, the prophets appeared. Elijah and Moses. They appeared men of prayer. They appeared. Why? There was an altar that needed to burn. There, there, there was an altar that needed to burn with fire. Moses was there. What did he manage to capture? You see, when you have power in the realm of the spirit, it says, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, taking with him. Imagine that prayer when you begin to burn your altar with fire through yes, prayer, it can cause the same power of men of old to be present with you there. Some of you here know. This is why sometimes when we begin to notice that the atmosphere of God is shift, we begin to say, Don't think for a second we didn't come praying from home. The whole week we were in prayer. But yet we are getting into prayer again on Sunday. Why? We are invoking the presence to be there in that moment and second. Sometimes you begin to notice. I mentioned stories of my man of God. I was with my man of God. I'm invoking the same power I need it now with me. What am I doing? I'm bringing fire on my altar. When you have fire, you journey beyond the curtain of time. It is men of fire that don't die. They journey. I'm, I've not even gotten into what I need to get into. Because for me to get into what I need to get into, I want you to reach the same frequency my spirit is at. Are you getting this? But what I'm about to tell you is very deep. We've not even started. Mele Caprano. Ayasishole. I pray, I pray, I pray. God, let it take place that some of these people, they can understand. Let no head here be left out of this. In Jesus' name. Now watch this. It is men of fire. Imagine, sit down. What was it about Hannah? Let me show you the scripture because I know some of you here. I know some of you here. Ayaka. What is it? Those watching me live, I hope you are with me. I hope you are with me. What was it? I see you, I see you, I see you. What was it about Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 13? Imagine, don't even worry about putting the scripture up. I want you to hear this. Imagine, listen, if you have notebooks, write in your notebooks. In fact, sometimes you don't even need to write everything. You, your spirit needs to catch it. If you feel like writing, write. But if you just feel like ascending, just ascend with me. But just make sure you write notes after this. You watch it again. 
Notice, what was it? Hannah was in the temple. And when she was in the temple, she connected to the frequency of God that the location became so holy holistic that even the prophet Eli, when he walked into the location, he said, Hannah, why are you drunk with wine? And she stepped and said, I am not drunk with wine, but I am drunk with the Spirit. Imagine that the level that Hannah reached in prayer that day, even the prophet didn't understand. The prophet Eli, he had not connected to God that, 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 that part. So, 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 he had not pressed into God that hard in prayer. He did not recognize this level that he saw Hannah praying. She said, I am not drunk with wine, but I am drunk in the spirit. She was pressing in prayer. Her altar was burning. She wasn't praying any normal prayers. There was a matter that was on her heart. There was a burden that was on her shoulders. Her altar had to be burned. So even when the prophet entered, he saw Hannah. <laughs> Sit down, sit down, sit down. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk. I am a woman of a broken spirit. I am a woman of a broken spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, and have, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Notice what she said. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a broken spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul. There was a level of prayer where it was no longer praying for time, for keeping time sake. She was praying to pour out her spirit of God. But how, when was the last time you poured your spirit out to God? She pressed in prayer so deeply. It was no longer prayer. It was pouring her spirit out to God. That even when Eli, the prophet, had entered, he did not recognize that level. You are waiting for a prophet to speak a word. When there is power on the inside of you, there is fire on the inside of you, but that fire needs to descend upon your altar. When, when will you stop waiting for the prophet to speak a word? If he speaks a word, it is good. And when he speaks a word, we catch it. But when you are, you are relying, you, 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 you are useless until the word is spoken. When will fire descend upon your altar that you be like Hannah and you pour out your soul to God and you say, Lord. Hey. Sit down, sit down. Imagine I looked upon that, the book of Samuel and I can imagine Hannah. Sesefe, seselika. She, she pressed in prayer so deep that they even thought she was drunk. She said, this one, I am not drunk in wine. I am drunk in the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you were drunk in the Holy Ghost? We say deeper life phase and the prophet declared that the deeper life phase is not a phase that has a time schedule on it. It is something that is eternal. The moment we enter deeper life phase, you enter deeper life sin. When was the last time your altar burned? When was the last time? Imagine that Abraham, his strength was hidden in his ability to burn his altar. That even when you look at the rest of the book of Genesis, the Bible says that Isaac built an altar. Jacob built an altar. Meaning the inheritance they received from their father was the ability to burn altars. So, Fradiake, imagine receiving an inheritance to build altars. You are waiting for an inheritance of a house. Waiting for an inheritance of a vehicle. I am not saying it's a negative thing, but there were people that were waiting for the inheritance of the ability to put fire on their altars. Imagine what the Bible is telling us, that even the sons, it is not that the fire of Abraham was working for them. No, they had the ability 
from his inheritance to also put fire on the altar. But they needed to manually do it themselves as well. I wish some people here were catching this. It is the sons of Moses, the sons of Abraham, that looked upon their father and said, we have seen where your strength is coming from. We have seen where your power is coming from. It is not seen in your ability to have faith alone. It is seen in your ability to burn your altar. God is not looking for men of giftings. He is looking for men of altars. One of the biggest mistakes you can ever make is to think you are living in a world. This is not a world we are living in. It is a marketplace. And every marketplace has transactions. You are here living, not knowing there are transactions that are taking place unbeknown to you. Before your visa is rejected at the home office, in the realm of the spirit is, is rejected. Because although we are operating in the visible world, the rules we operate by are of the invincible world. You are walking here wondering how come I came in this world for free. I don't feel like there is any marketplace. The reason why you cannot recognize it's a marketplace is because you are the product. It is because you are the product and the enemy is trading your destiny for pleasure. But the problem is you don't recognize it because you are spiritually asleep. The Bible said, surely the Lord was here and I was spiritually asleep. The Lord was present and he was spiritually asleep. He did not recognize it. You are wondering. What is taking place? This is why when you open your social media accounts, there are people here that open. They are watching me now on YouTube, watching me now on Facebook, watching me now on Instagram. They are thinking that app, the application they are on is free. Yet they don't realize they are the product. They are the one being sold. It is the attention that is being sold. It is the attention that is being bought on a daily basis. The attention is being bought. But what you don't know is that spiritually, transactions are taking place upon that platform of transaction. Upon that marketplace, transactions are being made. The enemy is trading in your destiny for pleasure. Imagine that Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. And Potiphar was succeeding because of Joseph. What was the fire? What type of fire was it upon his head? That Aya Kapaleka Frano. What type of fire did Joseph carry that if you came into contact with him, the fire will also burn you as well? Imagine that if you come close to me, if you come into contact with me today, your business will succeed. There is no way you can spend seven days with me and you are still in the same position. Why? There is anointing of Joseph upon me. There is a fire that is burning on my altar. It's impossible. There is no way you can walk with prophet angel like this. Even one day, with him it's worse. And you are still in the same position. If you are still in the same position, you are a fool. Sit down. That is not revelation you need. It's a slap you need. Fivefold ministry. This one is the truth. So imagine that Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. Everything was succeeding. And when the wife of Potiphar went for Joseph, she said, he, he, he ran. Why did he run? Never fled with sin. He weighed his destiny with the pleasure, with the temporary pleasure and gratification of his soul at that time, gratification of his flesh at that time. He weighed both scales and he came to the realization that my destiny is heavier. So then she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Listen, when you see sin, don't negotiate with the enemy. Run. Never negotiate with evil. This is why, this is why the Bible says, 
Suffer not a wish to live. Because you can never under, underestimate the power of someone that is still breathing. You can never underestimate the power of someone that is still breathing. The Bible said, suffer not a wish to live. The moment you see that there is inclination of sin rising up, kill it at the root. And the only way it dies is by fire. Sit down, sit down. Joseph, inside, he fled. He didn't leave. He didn't walk out. He fled. Never negotiate with sin. Never negotiate with evil. Run. He ran that he even left his garment. His garment was left. Go to verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. Hey, he just went there. His intention was business. But the enemy's intention was his soul. He didn't know the day he was entering that house, the same house he entered every day. He didn't realize that that day, that house had become a marketplace. The enemy's intention was to trade his soul for pleasure. And when he recognized it, he ran. Don't negotiate with sin. This is why I told you that time that some things don't need prayer. This is what I said. Some things don't need prayer. Let me tell you something. I was going in one location. I was in this taxi. And when I'm in this taxi, this is what the Spirit of God is telling me right now. This is not anything I came with from my house. What I came with from my house, we've not even touched on now. This is the Spirit of God demanding words to be spoken to you now. Say, Shaliga Kaladoshi. Sit down. I was in one hotel. I was in one hotel. Kaya say, Shoke. There's someone here. The Lord is telling me. And He's showing it me now. You have suffered for a long time. Your time of suffering is coming to an end now. The Lord actually told me. This is what the Lord just told me right now, right now as I'm speaking to you. That the expiration date on your poverty, the expiration date on your struggle, the expiration date on your lack was the 3rd of April. So we are already a day later. I speak now. Let your success come now in the name of Jesus. In every area of your life now, fire. Someone shout fire on the altar. Sit down, sit down. I was in one location. And I had, I was in this luxury hotel in a place called Piccadilly. How many know Piccadilly? So, I've now gone, one of my cousin brothers. He's also staying in London as well. Now you see us, we don't sleep. All right? We don't sleep. Even if you say... Where are you? 4 a.m. I say, I'm here. Let me go to you. <laughs> so I left my hotel in Piccadilly, maybe early hours, 12 o'clock. Now it's a, I'm, I'm at his place, and it's just a few minutes. Away. How are you? We're talking. We're laughing. We're laughing. And he's a great brother of mine and appears in so many photos with me because we love each other a lot. That doesn't mean if you see the person appear in a photo with me, we are close. Please. <laughs> that person may be a scammer. Beware of them. <laughs> Please, don't trust them just because they have a photo with me. Only trust my blood, the one that bleeds the same. Levi, Jude, Seth. <laughs> now, imagine, I've gone to his place, and now I'm now leaving the place around 2 a.m. I said it's getting really late. I now get the driver to come. This, I get this, your thing that you guys use, Uber. <laughs> this contraption of yours. <laughs> now, as I'm in this Vehicle, whether it was a Range Rover or whatever it was. I'm in this vehicle. 
and I'm getting back to my place. I'm just a few minutes late. Then he says, oh, so you're staying in Piccadilly? I said, yes, of course. <laughs> this is a testimony for another time. I know some people. <laughs> so, so he said, you're staying in Piccadilly? Of course. That's me. Then he said, so tonight you're going to be partying, you're going to be enjoying. Listen, these Uber drivers, I just entertained them. So I say, of course. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> he wants to talk to me, I'm tired. So I said, <laughs> Now, we're getting closer to the hotel. Then he says, oh, so, so which type of fun are you looking for tonight? Maybe I'm missing the story. Maybe... <laughs> no, I know some people. Um, what I'm realizing, every Sunday, someone came to me. They said, Sia, please, these stories of yours, you're exposing yourself every Sunday. I said, Kai, it's true. <laughs> now imagine, this one, I didn't know. Now, I mean, he says, so which type of fun are you going to be looking for tonight? Fun. I'm confused. So what type are you looking for? Black, Indian. I said, <laughs> this brother has got a different revelation that I have that I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I say, well, I said, no, 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 I don't know what you you mean. They said, Oh, oh, you're not looking for <laughs> I came. I arrived at my hotel. I said, Thank you. When I stood up, I was about to go in. Then I said, Let me just wait outside my hotel. That's when I now saw women walking up and down. I thought these were people going home. Until I stayed there for 10 minutes, it was the same people going back and forth. I said, maybe I'm delusional. I stayed. I, I came inside. I opened the window because this, when you get into the entrance where the reception is, there's a window where you can open the curtain and you can just see. I stayed there for 30 minutes. I saw cars, pick them up, drop them back. They stayed there again. They... That's when I realized the place where I was was, was a marketplace. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Maybe this is a different testimony for another time. Online people, online people. I need you, I need you in the comments to really <laughs> help me here and forgive me. Let me tell you something, what my first resort as a man of God and a man of fire and man of the cloth was to do. I didn't enter the place of prayer. I packed my bags. I called my cousin brother. I said, I hope you have a spare room for me because I'm coming where you are. Shut and get thee behind me. Ah. <laughs> sit down, sit down. I left. This is not the time and place to convince myself I am strong. I am not. This is not the time. I'm not strong. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not strong. Let me flee. This is why even a lady, she can't come close, too close to me. Don't whisper in my ear. I don't have the capacity for it. Hey! Ah, sit down. Who am I? That time I'm not going into. I, that's where ego needs to relax. To say, yes, I'm the son of the prophet. This thing I will pray for them. Hey! It will lead from me from praying for them, saying, Where are you sleeping tonight? <laughs> this one. Let me put ego aside. Let me put pride aside. As a man of God. Yeah. Sit down. As a man of God, let me summarize that location. And, and you see the problem. That hotel it was very nice and, and cheap. It was so nice. I even loved it. I said, this place, I'm giving you guys business. The last conversation I had with them, 
I was actually saying, I actually want to stay here for my whole life. I said, I want to do two years, I stay here, give me your prices. Hotel, that's how much I liked it. The moment I saw it was a marketplace, I said, God, let me leave this place. <laughs> Never negotiate with evil. <laughs> this place is a marketplace. It's not the time to be ne negotiating with evil. Never negotiate with evil. The Bible says, suffer not a wish to live. Never underestimate the power of someone that is still breathing. Suffer not a wish to live. Why? Because the ability, when you see, when you want to recognize the power of a genuine true man of God, it is not seen in his ability to give life, but his ability to extrapolate it from your nostrils. A genuine man of God has the ability not only to give life, but an ability also to take it. This is the truth. And the Bible says, suffer not a wish to live. My duty that day was not to negotiate with sin. From that day, I don't know what Piccadilly looks like. <laughs> some people think I'm joking here. I wish I had some people here, some people that were with me that could really testify on my behalf. And I wish I had people that could respond to what I'm saying. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. I've never seen the street of, I don't know what it looks like. Wow. One day I was in a taxi. They said, oh, we just have to go through Piccadilly Circus. I said, Piccadilly. Hey. I said, no, 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 no. I don't have the capacity. They said, no, it's Piccadilly Circus. I said, okay. Don't negotiate with sin. It is a marketplace. The biggest mistake you can ever make is to think we are in a normal world. It's a lie. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. And I'm about to get deep here. Let's read. 3, 2, 1, go. For we wrestle not against flesh in fact, and in blood. In fact, start from verse 11. Verse 11, let's start from there. I want you to get this. Please, read slowly, read very well, so that it can migrate into your spirit. Those online, read with us. 3, 2, 1. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice what the Bible is saying. <clears throat> first things first, what you must note is that the moment you accept Christ into your life, you have placed your name into the ballot box of becoming a contender against evil. The Bible says become a partaker according to the afflictions of God. That the moment you are near me, you will become a partaker of the afflictions. It is not something that could take place possibly. It is a definite article. And the Bible says here, for we war not against flesh and blood. But against who? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See. See. Against principalities, against powers, against... Notice what the Bible is saying. First, verse 11. <coughs> Put on the what? That you may be able to do what? <clears throat> the Bible is saying, put on the armor of God. Put on the breastplate of God. Put on the shield of God. So that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. You have no altar. altar. You have no fire on your altar. How do you expect to be a contender against the enemy? It was when David was with Goliath. Goliath underestimated the power. In fact, he estimated the power of David correctly. But he underestimated the power of the person that was in David. And notice what takes place. 
Goliath looked upon David and he says, have you given me, a, am I a dog that you give me a stick? It looked like a game. This is how the enemy looks upon people with no altars. He looks upon people with no altars as sticks for dogs. You are just playing a foolish game. And the Bible says, put on the armor of God. Bring the scripture. Verse 11. But let's go verse 12 of the book of Ephesians. Verse 12. Are you here, somebody? Yeah. For we wrestle against, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Notice what the Bible is saying. This battle is not a battle against flesh and blood. Yes, you will see the man who exercises in the gym, the man who carries muscles with him, is not more stronger than the man of prayer. Because it is the man of prayer that is fighting the real battle. Yes. God is not looking for people that are strong in stature, but people that are strong in prayer. Yes. People that have altars that can burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes. This earth we are in is not a normal earth. It is not a world. It is a marketplace. But we are sleeping. This is why we are victims to the enemy's plans. Sit down. There was one woman in the location of, of, of Nigeria. When she was in Nigeria, she had animosity with one lady. They would always argue, always fight. And I remember it was my father, Prophet Angel, that told me this story. Real story. Hello. Hi. Those all around the world. Real story. Animosity with this lady. And the lady that she had a problem with died. On the day of a burial, people were there. These people were there. These people were there. Very few people mourned after that lady because of the character she had. I wish some of you here. Because of the character she had, very few mourned after that lady. A few weeks later, this lady who attended the, the funeral of the person that she had disagreements with was walking in the market with her daughter. She was there in the location. She was then in the location. And as she's in the market, she notices a lookalike of the lady that they buried. And when she looks upon the person, she said, this is the person. And she even began to doubt it that how it's, it's impossible because this lookalike was exactly the same. And when they realized it was not the lookalike, is when they looked at the dress she was wearing, the same dress she was buried in. And when they said, let's follow this lady, they went to follow the lady. Are you here, somebody? They followed the, This is real story in Nigeria. This is real. They went to follow the lady. And as they went to follow the lady, they went to follow the lady. This is the lady she had animosity with. She went to the lady went to the lady, got to her, and said, it's you. And when the lady turned around, she hit her with a slap. And when she hit her with a slap, stroke on one side of the face. Immediately from a slap. Stroke immediately. People were in the location that saw it take place physically. I just seen this woman getting beaten for reasons they don't know. This is the same lady they buried. And when she slapped her, there was a stroke on one side of the face. It is only at a deliverance service, time after, that she said the testimony that says, my daughter is here, she can testify. There were people that saw it take place. I was slapped by the same lady we buried. And I had a stroke on my face. What do you call that? Those are principalities of darkness. Oh, yes. The biggest problem is you think the world we are in is normal. And don't make the mistake of thinking these things only take place in Africa. It is not location alone. Even though location has a lot to do with a lot of these demonic things. Mm. But it is not location alone. Many of you feel as if you are suffering from generational cases. It is not a generational case. It is a generational spirit that has followed your father, followed your mother, now followed you. Why? Because demons have no reproductive organs. So the same spirits that were fighting Moses, 
Same spirits that were fighting Abraham are the same spirits that are here today. The same demonic spirits of old are the same that are here. They have no ability to give birth to a new demonic spirit. They are the same ones. So you wonder, how come this is taking place? How come this is taking place? It is because it is a spirit following the bloodline. This is why the Bible says Abraham liked fair women. Isaac liked fair women. Jacob liked fair women. Their whole family liked a particular woman. To you, you think it's by accident. No. It's a generational spirit. Not a generational curse. The problem is we have become too conformed to the systems of the world that we begin to embrace those things. Even my father, he was like that. Even my grandfather. This is not something to smile about. It is a generational spirit. And the reason why the spirit can even get close to you is because there is no fire on your altar. There is no fire burning on your altar. This is why it seems demonic spirits are attracted to you. It seems as if they are attracted to you. Oh, God, give me strength. The Bible said it in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. It said, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. The person that lives a life of pleasure is dead whilst they are living. You are wondering, how come God is not hearing my, my prayers? Is he not hearing me? You are spiritually dead in the realm of the spirit. A person that lives a life of pleasure, pleasure is spiritually dead. Why? Because pleasures of this life, sin hides you from God. This is why it was in the book of Genesis that when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, God said to Adam, where art thou? What? I know some people are not getting this. What type of foolish question is that? The question can make sense for us, but for the person that the God that is all-knowing, the same God that says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. The same God that says, when you call, I shall answer. The same God says, whilst you are yet speaking, I will hear. This is the same God that is saying, the all-knowing God, the Alpha and Omega that says, where are you? How? What audacity does he have to say, where are you? This whole time, you knew where Adam was. But the moment he stepped out of a line of God's vision, he was invincible. Why? Sin makes you invincible to God's vision. This is why the first thing that Adam and Eve resorted to do when they realized they had sinned was to hide. Sin does two things. It moves you and pushes you to hide. And it also makes you hidden from God. He looked upon Adam and said, where art thou? Imagine what the Bible says. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam, said, where art thou? Imagine that verse 8 says, the voice of God, it didn't echo in the garden. It wasn't just sounding in the garden. It was walking in the garden the voice of God can walk you don't know it why you are spiritually asleep to the affairs of the enemy you are spiritually asleep imagine that Adam the whole time God knew where he was except the time that he sinned sin makes you blind to God you ask yourself, nothing is moving in my life. This thing is not changing in my life. It seems as if I'm failing in my life. I keep on praying, God, you are not hearing me. I wish some of you. God, you are not hearing me. It's a life of sin. A life of sin. I wish some people here. It is a life of sin, God, that is causing you to be hidden to God. When we introduce the deeper life phase, some of you just thought it was a t-shirt. 
you're excited about the new apparel. But you didn't treat it with the revelation it needed to be treated with. A deeper life phase means separation from the world and rebellion against sin. This is why in our youth, we say we are rebels for Christ. Why? We are rebelling against what the world does. Notice, this is what the deeper life phase is all about. And when you look at fire, fire is, it doesn't only burn, but it separates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sit down. When fire is on altar, it separates. This is why it was Elijah, when he spoke to Elijah, he said, if you see me go, you will receive what you have asked for. And when he was taken, it is chariots of fire that separated them. Fire separates and fire purifies. When you live a life of fire on the altar, a deeper life, there is no way sin can find you. There is no way. It is the way of separation. The way of separation. But some of you, we are too given to our pleasures. Are you willing to say, God, strip me from everything. All I want is you. Because the price of all of him is all of you. I sat in my house. I said, God, I'm all alone here. I'm just by myself. And when I leave this location, I'll be by myself again. My family are not with me. When on Monday to Sunday, I don't talk to anybody. Nobody is with me. I am all alone in my household. I said, God, why is it you allow me to be alone? And then I realized it is the way of the wilderness. Sit down, sit down. I said it is the way of the wilderness. Because I was in my house and I said, God, you can't allow me to be alone. I have no friends to talk to. I have nobody to call. I don't go out. I have no wife. I have nobody around me. My family, they don't, they don't live with me. Why would you allow me to be alone? I said, God. Sit down, sit down, sit down. And then I realized it's the way of the wilderness. Because even Moses, he needs to be separated from the palace. I read about Moses. And Moses, he left the palace for 40 years. It was him and God alone. So I say, God, I know why you have placed me here. You have placed me in the period of the wilderness. And it is in the wilderness that, Abe, that Moses was able to perform more miracles than he did in any period of his life before the wilderness. <laughs> sit down, sit down. So I realize it's the way of the wilderness. Because it is in the wilderness that God chisels men. I cried the first day. I said, God, how is it? I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't go out. And when my generation are going out, I'm staying at home. I'm reading your scriptures. It's just you and me alone. When I'm with all the people on the pulpit, behind the pulpit, it's just you and I. The people, they don't see me when it's just you and I. The work that I have behind the pulpit is more than I have on the pulpit. It's just you and I at the end of the day. When the lights turn off, it's just you and I. When Instagram posts have been liked and every video has been viewed, it is just you and I. When 12 million, 200 million people can view your video praising you, after it's done, it's just you and I. I cried that day and I was forced to wipe my tears because I realized God had placed me in the period of the wilderness. Separation. And during this time of the wilderness of my life, the time where I was with people, the amount of times I've, I've, I've touched my Bible is more than when the people were with me. The things I've gained through the revelation of God are more than when people were with me. I've journeyed and captured spiritual things more than when people were with me by my side. That's when I realized it's God chiseling my tongue. It's God chiseling my tongue. He's preparing me for greater. Because even the Bible says...
Sit down, sit down. Even the Bible says, endure hardness as a good soldier. At the beginning of the year, I told God, I don't want to be a soldier of yours. I don't want to be any soldier. I need to be a perfect soldier. If you need to break me, break me. What your will is for my life, do it through me, Lord Jesus. If everybody around me needs to leave, let them leave, Lord Jesus. Why? When fire is upon your altar, separation is on your altar too. This is why the Bible says a gift maketh room for a man. There are two meanings, two accurate meanings for that verse. It means a gift will bring you before great men, as it says there. It will make room for you before great men. But the second meaning is it will also remove men from you as well. People that do not advance you in the kingdom, people that do not add to your advancement in the kingdom will leave you, will betray you, will talk against you. Why? Fire separates and fire purifies. Fire separates the counterfeit from the original. It is fire. Sit down. It is fire. But some of you, the reason why your fire is not burning, forgive me. The reason why your fire is not burning is because you have poured cold water on it. Your attitude has poured cold water on it. Your character has poured po cold water on it. Notice what Hannah said. She said, I have come in the spirit of brokenness. I am not here because I am perfect. I am far from perfect. My pursuit is to be perfect. Because I know it is possible through the Lord Jesus Christ to live a sinless life. As the Bible says... He is coming for a church with no spots, no blemishes. I know if I did, I, I, what sin did I commit today? I didn't lie to anyone. I didn't deceive anyone. Then I know it's possible to live a, a, a sinless life. Even if you think yourself there, my brothers and sisters, those that are watching me live, what sin have you honestly committed this week? You have gone to work, come back home, which sin have you committed? Then you know it's possible to live a sinless life. Yes, Notice what she said. I know I am not perfect. My pursuit is to be perfect. I know I am not strong. It is the Lord that makes me strong. Amen. Someone came to me. One young person. And when I say young, you have to really understand what I mean by young. There are some people that I call older than me, young. Okay. It's just by mistake I say it. Because I'm judging by spirit. That's all I judge by. So one young gentleman, he says, see He had got all the money out of his pocket. And he placed it. And he put it in an envelope that he just found and he gave. Imagine that it wasn't even my service. I had attended someone else's service. Because my, my father sent me. My prophet sent me. And he said, I want you to go here. When I went there, the person just saw me. There were many people. And sometimes even when we go to these other conferences that Prophet sends us, we go out quickly. Because it's so difficult to come out when people recognize you. So the person grabbed an envelope. He said, whatever I have. The envelope was of the church, not my church. He put all the money, even the watch that he had, he took it off. He put it there. He said, see, please. I pray, let me be like you. Blessed everything. He said, I just, just pray for me to be like you. I said, my brother, don't be like me. Be better than me in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I said, be better than me in the name of Jesus. What he said, I took it because I knew it was from his heart. But I said, but your prayer request, change it. You shall be better than me. I can make a mistake. God will never make a mistake. 
I can have blemishes. The Lord will never have a blemish. It is impossible for him to have a blemish. So the reason why I'm here is not because of my perfections, but because of my imperfections. It is through my imperfections that God makes me perfect. And notice that God is looking for someone with a broken spirit. A spirit with humility. A spirit that can genuinely say, Lord, I know it is not by my own ability. Not by my own might, but by your spirit, Lord Jesus. That is what God is after. This is why it was Hannah praying in the spirit of brokenness. In the spirit of brokenness. She was in the spirit of brokenness. That in her prayer, God recognized it. Say the woman of sorrowful spirit. It was through her brokenness. It, God is looking for your brokenness. I told you once in a service that every single time, every single time before I ascend to the pulpit to minister, I kneel down and I say, Father, this work I'm about to do, I cannot do it without you. Please, Father, use me as your vessel to help the people I'm about to speak to. And let your will be review, revealed through me. I disappear so you can appear, Father. A prayer I pray every Sunday without fail. Without fail. Without fail. I pray that prayer. I pray that prayer. Why? I know it is the spirit of brokenness that God is looking for, not my ability. My ability can fail me if I don't choose to align with it. Can fail me if I don't align properly. Because this thing, the Bible said, rightly dividing the word of truth. Even the word needs to be divided. What more the prophetic word? There are prophets that I know that these prophets, they pray for my father every day. People in Ghana that will ascend a mountain and pray for my father, they're praying right now. Men, great generals of God that I know are praying for my father. I've spoken to them on the phone. I've been with my father, been with them, and someone will be on the phone and prophesying. One guy I was with, my father is calling this prophet to prophesy to this young gentleman. Other prophets, this. One of the prophets that we spoke to was prophesying to this and the, 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 the gentleman's name that I was with, his name was Jacob. So the prophet spoke to him, and he said, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. Just before we called the prophet, this is prophet angel that decided to call him. I didn't decide. I was talking to the gentleman, just me and him. Everything he told me, like he tells me now. Then my father calls me, he says, I need to talk to you. I need to. He arrives from another location, we go out with him. Then the prophet was prophesying the things he told me just then. Myself, I was shocked. I prophesy every single time, but even after the prophetic, I'm shocked as well. Why? Because I'm Jesus Christ's biggest fan. Every single time I see the Lord at work, I am so shocked because I'm his biggest fan. So I even look at the, the prophecies that take place and I say, God, I'm thankful to you. I'm thankful, Lord Jesus, that this person was helped like this. Not at my own ability. I have no ability. It is God's ability through me. And when he spoke to this young boy, everything, the young boy, is never, he doesn't know what the prophetic is. This is a celebrity. He doesn't know what he's just saying. What is this? How did this person know? And I've been with him. He's not seeing me with my phone, no. And he says, I'm seeing someone. It's like, J, 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 J. I told you this brother's name was what? Jacob, says Jay. I said, maybe it's Joseph. Joseph. Notice. The brother says, no, I'm not Joseph. I don't know anyone. I said, you. Your name is Jacob. But why is it that the prophet saw Joseph? That part was the flesh. The J was the spirit. Yeah. 
He was not wrong by a long shot. He's accurate because the Spirit of God can never be wrong. If his name was Jacob, then he should change to Joseph. But imagine why. Because that's what can take place where you allow the flesh to take over. That you even, that is even a better circumstance. But I'm just giving you an example so you can tap into the depth of the revelation of the prophetic. Why? Because even as seers of God, we also want to boost that person's faith. So when we are seeing the J, we'll say in the realm of the spirit is J, but this name is like this. And we'll complete it. But that completion, God may only be giving you the J. But you go ahead to Joseph. This, I'm trying to explain to you when I say the prophetic can fail me. I'm not saying the prophetic. The prophetic can never fail me. It's God giving me the information. But I can fail it. I may go ahead with my flesh. It doesn't mean the person is not blessed. The person is blessed. But those are small things that you can recognize like this. Oh, he's got it right, but it's his flesh that finished it off. Are you getting this? It's the flesh that can finish it off that you're seeing. I'm seeing A. I don't know if there's anyone like Adam. Then they say, no, it's Alex. Oh, it's Alex. The A was correct, but the flesh jumped to finish. Yes, sir. Why? Because when you speak of the prophetic, prophets, prophets can never prophesy anything that there is not already in their spirit. They cannot prophesy of a location they don't know. There is an ability to journey for other prophets to even say other things they don't know. But that is, it's not easy the way you think it is. God will have to reveal letters, letters, letters like this, like this. This is why when I go to the nation of Zimbabwe, I don't, un I don't know Shona. I don't understand Shona. But I can get to someone and by letters appearing like this, like this, like this, like this, I now put it together and I can say, this is the location I'm seeing. And my pronunciation is very wrong because I don't know the location. Are you getting what I'm saying? But for that to take place, it's not as easy. It's easier for me to say I'm seeing Knightsbridge because Knightsbridge is already in my spirit. Yes, Are you getting this? Yes, what I'm trying to tell you is that for God to pull something out of you, it must be in your spirit. Yes. These are principalities. You are seeing principalities, rulers of that. Those are type of demons. Yes, you are just thinking it's the description. Those are type of demo demons. There are principalities. There are rulers of darkness. Then there are demonic thrones. Then there are demonic messengers. These are different types. The reason why you may be, I believe it was Jacob who said, I, I was asleep and surely the Lord was not here. The Lord, Lord was, the, Lord, the Lord was here. You may be here and spiritually asleep. The reason why you are spiritually asleep is because you don't know. It has not entered your spirit. The Bible said, my people perish. Because of what? Lack of knowledge. We are perishing every day because we don't know what the scriptures say. We don't know what the scriptures say. We have not awakened to the reality of Christ. This is the reason. Because the biggest advantage the enemy can have over us is knowledge. Even in the Garden of Eden, he was there. He has seen the patterns. He knows the ways of the enemy. He knows what destroyed your father, and he knows what can destroy you. This is why there are many of you that can notice the same problem your father had with the last is the same problem you are being suffocated with. You think it's a generational case. It's a generational spirit. The only way you can contend against those spirits is with fire on the altar. And fire on the altar can only be placed on the altar to people with revelation, people with knowledge of the scriptures, people who know him beyond the pulpit. I pray for every single person here under the influence of my voice. I pray by the Spirit of God that you journey with God in the name of Jesus, that your life may become a manifested reality of who he is. I pray in the name of Jesus, may you ascend different heights in the realm of the Spirit. 
May your life be changed forevermore. And this revelation that was spoken to you this evening, let it not depart from your lips, from your mind, and from your spirit. In Jesus' precious name.